Hello, this is Polar Bear 70 and I am uh, continuing on with the Let's Play videos that I've been making. I know it's been a while, but a new game has sort of popped into the, uh, into the gamosphere, and I thought I'd check it out. Uh, this is Sailwind. Uh, it has just been released to Early Access, which means uh, it's kind of raw, rough around the edges. Uh, it crashes every once in a while. It's okay, though, because um, it is delightful fun. Uh, and so, without further ado, let me, uh, let me get into it. Um, for this, I'm going to start a new game. <clears throat> and in the beginning, they allow you to choose three different regions. So there's, there's Al Ankh, which is sort of like a, it's a hot, dry region, mostly clear weather. Um, very um, Arabic uh, in, in features. Um, we also have the Emerald Archipelago, which is sort of the medium, warm, tropical, with heavy rainfall and frequent storms. Uh, this one is very much inspired by uh, the Far East. And then finally, we have the Hard Difficulty, uh, which is a temperate region, moderate rainfall, infrequent storms, but it can be challenging due to unpredictable winds. Um, and this is Astrin, which is, I guess, sort of modeled after Rome or something medieval, something like that. Anyway, to start us out, I am going to go with our easy difficulty and as we continue working through this one, um, eventually if I have to restart again because of crashes or whatever, uh, once we get the hang of this area, then we'll start moving up the difficulty chain. But uh, let's start right here. So this is going to basically pop us into first person view. Um, it's going to give us this early access warning. Um, so right now I should mention that I am playing on the 0 0.11 version. Um, so this has recently been updated to fix a bunch of bugs and issues. Um, so here's our ship. It's a single sailed vessel. Um, kind of like this little cool cabin in the back here. Uh, we will get to this in just a little bit, but first, let's go explore this town. So, this town is the town of Neverdin. You will always start here when you start in this region. And this little symbol right here, this flag, is indicative of the, like, the trading guild in the area. So, if I sneak in here, there's this nice guy standing here. Um, and I can look at the quests, and they give me quests to go to different places. Um, they give me the name of the town down here. Um, and so, for instance, uh, Rum to the Al Ankh Academy. <clears throat> so, basically, two barrels of rum. It's due in three days. Here's the amount of money I get for it. It shows me the distance and how much money I'm, I'm getting per unit and per mile. It gives me the origin and the destination, obviously. And it kind of shows me a little map view of where this is going. Not going to take this right now. Instead, I'd rather explore around the town. So, in addition to having this... Um, this trade guy right here, the trading guild... There's also a bunch of vendors, <clears throat> and the vendors are, are selling a bunch of stuff. Um, so, you know, bread and bananas and dates, and you can buy a whole crate of dates. Uh, you can buy water uh, for 120 gold. <clears throat> and if I hit tab, I go into my sort of inventory log screen. So in here, I've got five slots that I can use to carry stuff. Um, that's my inventory. <clears throat> my log is going to 
show me a whole bunch of stuff. Here's my reputation. Here's my daily logs, my current missions, my mission history. And then in here, I have the amount of gold that I have. So I have 100 gold. Um, this shows how tired I am. So, so far, I'm not really too tired yet. This shows me how thirsty I am. This shows me how hungry I am. So with that all in mind, let's keep going. <clears throat> um, this vendor is selling all sorts of uh, rum and coconut wine, stuff like that. So um, you can see that there is a variety of different things to purchase. Now these just look like houses, although I really love the island. Um, the way the settlements are done. Um, sort of the polygonal graphics, but it's still gorgeous. Um, here is a vendor for like ship supplies. So there's a compass I can buy for 120 gold. I can get a mug. I can get some firewood. Uh, I can buy a lantern. I can buy a lamp hook. And right now I'm going to buy one of these just because they're indispensable. I'll show you why in just a bit. So now I have this. Now I can carry this thing around with me, but I'd rather just stick it in one of my inventory slots. <clears throat> you can also buy a broom. Um, eventually you can buy a fishing rod. That's 300 though. And then there's fishing hooks. There's a whole bunch of them for 60 Um, and then finally over here, there's a guy who is selling um, fish, but he is selling uh, roasted fish. Now, you can eat fish raw, uh, but it doesn't give you as much caloric value as eating it cooked. And so, <clears throat> so excuse me, one of, the, um, one of the things that you can purchase, not here, but elsewhere, is a grill. Um, so that you can put a grill on board your boat and grill the fish that you catch or, you know, bring on board. So, let's take a look at our quests. Now, they're pretty much all over the place. Um, they go to all the different islands that are available. But before I go and pick, I'm going to cheat. And I mean, this is not really cheating. But... Um, hey, look, there's somebody else leaving. And there they go. Okay, so... What I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the top of my mast. And up there, there is a little flag. And that's telling me the direction of the wind. So right now, the wind is coming from yay direction. Okay, now I don't know which direction that is because I don't have a compass yet. So, if I go on my boat, it tells me to read the sailing manual. So, I'm going to pick that up. And then, basically what this says, it talks about the Sailwind Company, the port. That's the, the guild I was talking about. <clears throat> it gives you information. Um, if you deliver goods late you get a penalty in gold and a loss of reputation. If you fail to deliver or you abandon a mission, you also lose reputation. Um, the boat controls, they explain sort of how the boat controls work. I'll go into that in a little bit more detail. Um, the sailing techniques, so however the wind is blowing, and it's not really... Okay, so there's the wind direction that it's showing and then what it's basically saying is you have to angle the the sail in order to catch the wind correctly um, and then survival is energy water and food you can purchase food and water on most islands um, uh, you need a fishing rod and don't forget to attach a fishing hook and then to restore energy you sleep on your hammock now let me put this away right over here Okay. Um, when I first looked at the boat, I was like, okay, where is the hammock? There's no hammock. Yeah, yes, there is. It's actually out the back of the boat. Um, so, don't forget that every boat has a hammock. 
at least to start. <clears throat> so here is our, our, our lantern. And right now I'm going to drop this into a spot. But really what I'd like to do is I want to take this, this guy, and let's see if I can do this correctly. Yeah, like something like that. So I'm going to put him right here, and then I'm going to take the lantern, and I'm going to stick it right there. And so that way we'll, we'll have the lantern. It's got, it's got his own hook, place for it to be. Um, and so that's, that's all good. Um, on board our boat, we have a barrel full of water, and it has 60 drinks in it. I use that term loosely. It's, it's kind of drinks. Um, and a drink gives you a certain amount of thirst back. We also have uh, a box of goat cheese, 12 goat cheese in here. So usually what I do is I try to put all of my stuff back here. Uh, let's see if we can squeeze this in here somewhere. Um, so to rotate the object, I use my mouse wheel as I'm holding it. Uh, unfortunately, I have not really found a way besides manipulation to actually rotate it. Mm, come on. Oh, this is t taking entirely too long. All right. That's it. Never mind. I'll just drop it. Let me go. Why is this not letting me drop it? Oh, I was basically dropping it into the floor. So let's go like that. Okay. They also gave us a bunch of other things. Here's a mug. We're going to use that to collect water. So I'm just going to drop it into one of my slots. We have a compass, which is really awesome. So that's telling us that the wind is coming out of like the west, northwest. Um, so I'll just stick that into my inventory. And you'll notice that I can also read it out of my inventory, which is incredibly helpful. And then finally, we have a map. And this is the map of the local area. Um, so I am going to grab this and stick this in our slot right down here. Okay. So now we know that the wind is coming out of the north, the west northwest. So we don't really want to do anything to the west. We could do stuff to the north, but to the east is probably easier. So, with that in mind, let's run over here. Come in to see this guy. And let's, um, that's kind of a haul for our first trip. I'm thinking about going to Gold City. <clears throat> Gold Rock City. Um, it's sort of the main island in this island chain. Um, and so that would probably be a good destination for us. So there's two bottles of rum for 170. We'll take that one. And then they also want coconuts, one unit of coconuts for 146, also going there. So let's do that one too. Now we can only take two missions right now because of our reputation. So that is pretty much it. Now when you come out, the items that you're looking to, to grab are right here. Um, and I didn't know that when I first started. <laughs> so I was looking around the island trying to figure out where do I buy all these coconuts from? And where is this rum coming from? No, no, no. It's a, it's a delivery service. So you don't actually have to buy any of this stuff. You just have to deliver it. Now it's important to note one other thing. Is that these are sealed containers. So you can't actually break into them and like drink all the rum. Or at least, I haven't tried anyway. You probably shouldn't do that. 
Alright, so let's let's run all this stuff down here. We'll jump into the boat. We'll drop this stuff down right here. Come on. I don't think we can fit the other one next to it, but we'll try. Okay. <clears throat> So we'll try to fit this in here. I don't think it's going to fit. So we'll just stick this guy right here. Okay. So our first instruction is untie the mooring ropes from the dock. Okay. So we're going to take this off. Now the cool part is when you take this off of there, like I can just slip it back on again. But if I take it off and I click anywhere, it just automatically goes back here, which is absolutely wonderful. All right, so that's one mooring rope. Here's the other one. I take it and I just click it off. Okay, now it says unfurl the sail using the halyard winch on the mast. So here's the mast, here's the winch, and basically it lets me drop the sail. Well, that's pretty cool. Um, whenever I need to, to, to use something, I click on it. And then I have control of it. So this is the sheet winch. This is going to um, this is going to direct how much sail, uh, what angle of sail um, I'm putting out there. So let's put it out like this right now. Um, and then of course here's the wheel. Now let's see where we're going. So right now we're kind of heading to the northeast. Which, if I look at my map, that is actually the way we're supposed to be going. So I'm just going to leave it. I put it back in my inventory. And bye-bye, Neverdin. I enjoyed, uh, I enjoyed visiting. Okay. So now, the interesting part is, you can see, like, an island up there. That happens to be our destination. Um, the Gold City Island, um, the Gold, the Gold Rock City Island, that's out there, is pretty much visible throughout the entire um, region. So, so, uh, so yeah. So we can always use that as kind of a landmark. This island up here, so that's just a little bit to the, it's like the north, north, northeast, <laughs> okay? That's, that is going to be the Isle of Clear Mind. So it looks like we're basically heading in the right direction. Okay. So now, one of the interesting parts about this is when the sail is completely down, you can't actually see in front of it, um, which is usually not a problem. I need to head a little bit to the right. If worse comes to worse, I can always hit the C button, which gives me a view from outside my ship. Okay? Uh, we use this very often to go look at that flag since it's at the top of the mast. Uh, with that in mind, uh, let me move this a little bit. Get this going to the right just a bit. And then we we, we center it again. So now we're heading towards uh, the Gold Rock City. Uh, island. There's another boat out there. Um, there's that island. Now it's basically just sit back and relax. Um, one of the things I did notice is if I look directly upwards, the sound of the wind increases substantially. I think that's a little sort of uh, unintended bug right there, uh, based upon the, the angle. But if I go up, yeah, it gets really loud. Also, if I go straight down, it also gets really loud as well. Not sure what's going on there. It's probably a bug. 
it's okay. We're having fun. And this is it. We're on a journey through the seas of of uh, Al Al Ankh. Yes. Delivering rum, yo ho ho, and coconuts. So in good shape so far. Um, I should mention that there is a hammock back here, and I'm starting to get a little tired. So what I'm going to do is the sun's setting right now, so I'm actually going to use the hammock for a little while. And basically, I'm going to fall asleep. And this is where it gets interesting. So this is sleeping. And I got to say, this is, I don't know, this is kind of cool. I, I, I. I like this. You can hear things. It's very muffled, and it's sort of like from in a tunnel, but you can sort of hear what's going on um, outside. So if you happen to run aground or something, you can actually hear it while you're sleeping. Um, now, occasionally what will happen is the bar is going to fill up for a certain amount, and then every once in a while I will wake up. I'll sort of gain consciousness for a moment, and if I don't click my mouse button, I fall back asleep again. So let me just click it, and now it is nighttime. So, wow, look at that sky, huh? If you're thinking there's too many stars out there, you're probably not correct. Because there's no light pollution on this on this planet. And so, yes, this is what the night sky is ought to look like. Anyway, speaking about light pollution, if I right-click on the lamp, there we go, we have some light. Now I can also take that off the, I can also just pick this up and carry this around if I need to. But I usually like leaving it on the, on the little hook there. <clears throat> so, uh, while we're here and while we're conscious, let's take a look at our ship. The wind is still blowing in that same direction. So I'm not going to move the sails very much at all. We're still heading towards um, Gold Rock City. And so now, if I look at my status, I'm getting a little thirsty and getting a little hungry. So let's talk about how you deal with that. So right here is my barrel of water. I can't actually drink out of the barrel of water directly. So I have to go into my inventory, grab my mug, I fill up my, my cup, and then cheers. And then I can fill it up again. And that should take care of my thirst problem. I'll put that guy back. Now for goat cheese, if I right click, I take one out of the container, and then I right click again to eat it. Very simple, very intuitive. Um, here's my little chair, or my little table, I guess. Um, I actually think I can sit in it, though. It's kind of made just for, uh, just for putting stuff on, if I need to. Um, so, I'm going to turn this light off and just watch the, the stars now. Um, you will notice that we have different constellations. Um, it's basically a different night sky, but this night sky is also accurate. So, um, everything is rotating around um, a north star. Um, all of this stuff will rotate um, the way it's supposed to, and so it's pretty interesting. It'll be interesting to see if somebody comes up with constellations for all of these things um, as part of the lore. Either the developer or just people going, hey, that looks like a flying man or, you know, a four-legged spider or something. So it, it, it will be interesting. Um, there 
should be, the moon should be out here someplace, although maybe it has set already. Um, but it also has its phases and everything else. So it's pretty detailed of the, of the world so far. Uh, one thing I do have to say is that the, the, um, the water is very calm right now. Um, there aren't a whole lot of storms in this area of the world. And so that's nice. When the storms do come, you definitely know that they're there, for sure. Um, and they really are kind of pretty amazing to be in, except kind of how scary they can be. So let's, um, let's take a look from the outside of the ship. Here's our ship silhouetted against the night sky um, on its way to to build Rock City. Um, you notice the hammock is in the back. Um, so yeah, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Let's see. I could take another nap. That might put me dangerously close to the uh, to the town, but let's give it a whirl and see what happens. I do notice that I may have to increase my voice volume um, because the the wind can get pretty loud out in the ocean, so I might have to adjust that a little bit. But let's see when we wake up now. This whole waking up thing from a dream is a total crapshoot. Um, I have pretty much slept an entire day away with this thing. And really, you're kind of not supposed to fall asleep while your boat is still under sail. You know, because you don't know where it's going to end up. But so far, I haven't really had a problem with it. Oh, this is good. Okay, so dawn is coming. Actually, let me do this, and, and while we're here, oh, that's probably much better. Everybody just breathed a sigh of relief when I did that, right? So, while we're here, let's look at the settings. You have sound volume, and you can mute the sound. Winch controls, you could do keyboard or mouse. Um, I leave them on a keyboard, and I can show you why in just a little while. Mouse sensitivity, this is the default. I just kept it where it was. Crosshair opacity. This is how much the dot in the middle of the screen is available for you to see. So, normally I have it out here. I was doing a little bit of testing before. So, um, recover boat. It costs 250 If your boat gets stuck someplace, um, or you can't get out of a situation, or you run out of food or water and you pass out, the game will automatically recover your boat costs 250 gold and send you to the nearest port so but we try not to do that if at all possible um okay so let me go back oh this is much better sound of the wind is not nearly as um as as uh as loud so the sun is coming up in the east there's the moon um, so it must have just risen. Um, you can see sort of the outline of the um, of the actual town there. And I have to think about what my approach is on this. If I look at the map, there are like three islands, and I basically want to skirt between... Um, I'm coming in from the west side of Gold Rock City, <clears throat> so I want to... I want to sort of skirt between the really, really large area and where, you know, and then the smaller island that's to the south of it. I'm probably coming that way, so that in mind. Let's put that back. That is pretty much over here, I think. So, while I'm still here, 
to check the direction of our wind. Okay, that's good. That's good. Um, so, I would like to move a little bit to the, to the port side. Like this. And then... Um, I think we'll leave the sail where it is. We might actually take it in just a little bit. If you'll notice, the wind is blowing. Oh, it's pretty much blowing. Almost perpendicular. Maybe not. No, no, no it, it, it is perpendicular, so let's put it back. I'll let this out just a little bit. Okay. So here comes the sun. And the sun is rising. This large conglomeration of rocks and make up this island um, and the major port town that is here. And then we will we will go, we will um, dock at the dock for the town. We will deliver our goods and then I think we will call it a video. So as you can see, you know, nice clear morning this morning. Um, barely any clouds in the sky, just a little bit. Um, the sun's coming up from behind the, the, the rocks, the island here. Um, and we are headed in into this port. Let's see if I can... Now, one of the things that you can do is, while you're doing this, you can hit F1. And it will actually tell you if, if things are out of, out of whack with your, um, with your sail angle. Or it will tell you, hey, you're heading directly into the wind. And believe me, you never want to head directly into the wind, if at all possible. Because um, basically, you just stop. So, let's see, we could use a little bit more food. Now, as we get more money, uh, we'll be able to grab a fishing pole and some fishing hooks. And that will provide us with a potentially steady food source from the ocean as we're heading across it. Um, and this will be useful because this will give us something to do on some of these long voyages. Um, the voyages can be pretty long. Um, but, you know, a lot of time you will spend, particularly when you leave a port, I generally try to... Um, I generally try to rest because I know that, you know, chances are I'm not going to run into the island that I'm going to. Um, and so it gives me an opportunity to rest. And that way I'm, I'm kind of refreshed for when I, when I actually get to the island. So if we look from above, it looks like we are heading um, directly to the dock. Really hard to see, but so if you look at the top of the mast, um, you'll see right here. I'm kind of pointing towards this little uh, part of the the eastern island that's there. I want to avoid that. Um, and as I'm coming into port, they're also going to denote sandbar areas by these pilings, these wood pilings. Um, that they've put there that indicate um, shallow shallow waters. So it'll be good to avoid those as well. Currently, I am yeah, I'm pretty much pretty much in line for where I want to go. I think. Uh, so we'll see what happens.
Now, as we come in, it, it's funny because as you're approaching places, it doesn't actually look like you're moving very fast through this water until you start actually approaching objects. <laughs> and then all of a sudden you realize, hey, I'm going pretty darn quick. So the brakes on this car that we're driving right here is basically right here. Um, if I lift up the sail, the less sail that is available for the wind to catch, the slower I'm going to go. Um, so, so yeah, so that, that's going to be our break. When we start heading towards the dock, we're going to need to be uh, cognizant of how fast we're going and what direction we're going in. And then we need to be kind of agile with getting the, the ropes tied up. But we'll, um, we'll, we'll get to that when we, when we actually get to the docking part of things. Right now it looks like I'm coming in at a pretty good angle. Um, I, I might want to tease a little bit to the right here, just a little bit. You will notice with this wheel... Um, there's one peg that seems kind of longer than the other ones. Um, and that's generally where the midpoint is. Although, if I, if I turn the rudder, if I turn the rudder in a particular direction, the rudder will reset itself naturally. So if I start heading this way and then I let go, it will, it will actually start resetting where it is. So, let's see if I messed this up too badly. Yeah, I gotta switch it back. <laughs> okay, so, we go like this, and we'll swing back out into the channel right here. Okay. Now, there is another thing. If I click to use this, right, um, if I right-click it, it locks the wheel in place. So, if I want to have it doing like a like a hard turn to the starboard, um, then I can actually set that right-click it to lock it in, and it will stay there while I do other things. That is incredibly helpful. Um, so, okay. So, for the time being, if I click on this again while it's locked, it will automatically unlock. So, now it's unlocked. It's free to move around. Now, I'm pretty sure if you can see where my, my uh, reticle is, that the dock is actually out here. Um, so I am going to have to readjust. I have to spin the wheel this way a little bit. You'll notice that the city is also a walled city. Um, Yeah, so this is this is the the, the big um, this is the the big city in this archipelago, and there are those three archipelagos. Um, they are connected by ocean, but they're very far away from each other. So if we ever want to sail between one and the other, that's going to be a long trip. So anyway that in mind, let us take a look at our sail, just one more time. Okay. Alright, so it is... Uh, I'm going to need to swing, a, swing to the starboard, to the right here, just a little bit, which will actually help us a little bit better, so the wind will be more in our favor. Um... 
So let me get down here. Now the cool part about this is <clears throat> if I use the, the keyboard as my control for the wheel, I can click here, I can spin around without moving the wheel, and then I can use my right and left um, movement keys to actually move the, uh, the wheel. And then I just click to let it go. So that actually works a lot better because if I did it by the mouse, I would basically have to be behind the wheel, perfectly centered. Um, and so, eh, I don't really want to do that. I would much rather be able to take the wheel from here, turn like, like that, and then just let it go. Oh, might have overcompensated a little there. Okay, there we go. Now you notice uh, details are coming into view. <clears throat> um, here's the wall of the city. There seems to be an open area up there. Uh, you'll notice if you look really carefully out there, you can see some of the some of those pilings that I was talking about. Um, and then basically where those it looks like another ship is already in dock you can s sort of see its masts uh, let's see where's my reticle right here you can see the masts sticking up right there so that's basically where we want to head, but I would like to, we're going to have to head to the port side in order to dock there, um, and when we do that, the wind is kind of going to be against us. That's not a terrible thing. It's going to slow us down. Um, it'll probably help us to give us a little bit more time to, to, do, to get our maneuvering done and everything, but... So yeah, this is, uh, this is Sailwind. Um, the nice part about this game, you can almost smell the seawater. Uh, you just, it just has a really nice feel to it. Um, I am very, very excited to see what the developer does in future updates with this. Um, given how, um, how for an early access game it does feel very fleshed out it is kind of fun to sail around to different islands and trade different things and and whatnot so let me take a look here those are the pilings i want to make sure i go past those so I don't want to end up in here, in this area right here, because that will end up with us beaching. And um, I'll, I'm sure sometime during this series, I will show you what a beaching looks like. It's not pretty, but it certainly is not completely disastrous. Um, okay, so here is the docks are off to the left. So we are going to head back over here. Okay, there is a two masted ship that's in the harbor uh, at the docks already. I'm going to click here and let's swing the boat around. Okay, so now we're headed into the dock. We're going to quickly check our mast. Yeah, it's still pretty good. Okay. Going to swing a little further in.
Now, I don't want to get on the very edge. I'm going to lift this up a little bit, put our brakes on for just a little bit. Because I don't want to come in too fast. Going to edge a little bit more towards the dock. Thankfully, this this town has a pretty long dock. Um, there's a lot of uh, merchant ships and stuff that come through this area, so it uh, it most certainly has a large enough dock. One of the things that I am going to do is I'm going to try to get towards the far end of the dock. I discovered this the last time. Uh, if you look straight ahead, you can actually see the uh, the guild flag, Sailwind's charter flag. So this is kind of where I want to be. So let's... Okay, I'm going to let go of the wheel. I'm going to lift up the sail. And I'm going to let us ease in. Uh, are we really easing in? Are we really easing in? Let me pull this down just a little bit. I'm going to push this to the left just to make sure that we're getting it to the dock. Okay. Now we lift this up. Okay. Now, I'm going to grab the mooring line. I'm going to jump off. And I'm going to hook it up to that line. I'm going to come back over here. Now, these mooring lines, I have to say, are very um, forgiving. <laughs> I can go quite a ways with these. Okay. And we are secured. <clears throat> now, what will happen is the mooring lines will tend to pull the boat um, equally. So it will end up pulling it towards the dock and then securing it between the two. The two. Uh, uh, there's a name for these. I don't remember what they're called. Uh, anyway, well, we're docked. Here is Gold Rock City. So let's make our deliveries. So, yeah, the guild office is all the way down here. Okay, so we delivered the rum. That's one of two. We still have to get the other one. Okay. Coming through here. Drop it off, and we have mission complete. So they paid us. We had 30 gold before. We now have 205. Hooray! And then, last but not least, we have the coconuts. And if I bring these in here, and I've completed that mission too. So now we have 351 gold. Um, and I think that is going to do it. Uh, for this video, we're now in Gold Rock City, and uh, we are looking to get more missions, maybe buy some more stuff, and then get back on the seas. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.